Has Sai Baba ever saved your life? Yes, he has 19, saved my life. In 1940? In around 1940, yes. I, I sat up in bed and I saw a lot of light all around the room and I could not see a source of that light. It was glowing everywhere, very bright light. At the same time I heard a voice. The voice spoke in English because at that time I forgotten my own language having been abroad for so long. Um, so um, the voice simply called my name three times okay, and then the question was asked by the voice, why are you doing this? The French boys are very naughty also. Uh, they used to uh, trick me into drinking wine and I got drunk. How old were you? I was nine years old. Um, and Swami was waiting there. You know, Swami welcomed me and everything uh, into the auditorium, uh, told me to speak uh, for one hour and 15 minutes. One hour and 15 minutes? Yes, it's a very long speech <laughs> in front of Swami. He broke down my ego completely. Um, that was a big lesson for me that I should never be attached to my ego, that I should not have that ego, I should be a simple person. With the ego, you think about yourself, not others. So if you have a lot of love and compassion, you don't have ego, because you think about other people. To have pure love, you understand that everybody is Swami, everybody is God. Dr. Art On Jamsai is a Buddhist follower of holy man Sri Satya Sai Baba of India. Dr. Jamsai is from Thailand. He's a member of parliament and he participated in NASA's Viking Space Project. Dr. Jamsai is also an author, winner of the Top Scientist of the Year Award for Invention, and much, much more. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This interview was recorded in Chicago, USA, on September 2, 2006. Dr. Jamsai. Yes. Thank you very much for agreeing to speak with us. We're here in the great city of Chicago at the Sai Baba Annual Labor Day Retreat, September 2nd, 2006. And do you know what I'm prompted most to ask of you right now? I don't know. <laughs> what kind of a little boy were you? Oh, I used to be a very naughty boy. <laughs> um, I used to fight with other boys. I used to be uh, very naughty in class, making a lot of noises and um, make my teachers very unhappy as a result. Uh, this was, of course, um, taking place in France and in England mostly. Uh, when I was in Thailand, I was a little bit be better uh, uh, as a small boy. Then I went to France when I was nine years old and I went to England when I was 11 years old. So before 15, I was really a very naughty boy. Where fighting. on earth did this mischievous nature come from? Because I, I presume you were raised in a very loving, peaceful Buddhist family? Yes, uh, that's why I say when I was in Thailand, uh, I was a reasonable, good boy. But when I went to France, um, the French boys are very naughty also. Uh, they used to uh, trick me into drinking wine and I got drunk. How old were you? I was nine years old. Um, but they, they used to drink uh, red wine as part of their meal, but they watered it down. I didn't know that. When my very first day at school in France, French boy gave me a, a glass full of red wine and said, this you have to drink. It's part of... Um, our culture and it's it's just like water so I drank the whole glass and I was drunk. Did you like being drunk? Not at all, no I <laughs> um, and it's because of that that I really stopped drinking I, I, I would not touch any more drink. You stopped, at a drink. you stopped at a very early age. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't enjoy it because I had to be carried home and um, you know, it's really a terrible experience. I heard you speak today, and uh, as you were speaking, it reminded me of something that may not be the right interpretation 
from the story you were talking about. I interpreted your story as being an, a unique, creative, and wonderful example of equanimity. But you may have a different way of explaining it. Would you be so kind as to repeat the story about these schoolyard boys who were just as naughty as you when you were in uh, France and in England who used to pick on you because in France you didn't have their language? Well, when I first went to France at the, the age of nine, um, the French boys were very interested in me because I didn't look like them. So they want to know about me, they want to get to know me. So they came and started talking with me. And of course I did not understand a single word of French. So all I did was to smile. Now, uh, they didn't think it was so funny. <laughs> um, because they wanted to talk to me, but I would not talk to them. So they feel it's very bad manners when you talk to to someone and that person doesn't talk to you, uh, doesn't reply, that's really bad manners. So they got very angry and when they became very angry they started to use all the uh, swear words, the French, uh, the worst French words that they can find um, and all I did was to smile because it's just vibration of air. Uh, there's nothing more than just vibration of air. So. To me, it was nothing, I did not understand them, so I smiled. So that was a lesson for me, in, for, for my future, because when people say bad things at you, I just say, oh, it's only vibration of air, and I don't need to uh, worry about it or get angry about it. However, after one month, uh, I, start, I started to understand what they, they were saying, I realized they were swearing at me and because of that I, got, I became very angry. You see, now I interpret the meaning uh, of that um, vibration of air. And when you interpret the meaning in, in a negative way, you become angry, you start to get upset. So I started to fight the French boys and I beat them all up because I used Thai kickboxing. <laughs> <laughs> So I became a very naughty boy as a result in France. <laughs> so what's the lesson here? Because it worked for you so well when you didn't understand French and it must have very it must have been very confusing to the boys who were picking on you. And then as soon as you learned it, you gave judgment to those words and acted on it in an equally negative way. So right. what's the, what's the lesson we can take away from this? Well, the, the main lesson is that uh, words are merely vibration of air. It depends on how you interpret it. So, as we grow up, we become more mature. We should learn to interpret uh, the vibration of air in a positive way. If people swear at us, we should say, ah, it's only vibration of air and what they're saying is a very good for me. You know, you should see Swami in them, uh, that they are really helping you uh, so that you learn self-control, you learn to have equanimity, okay? You learn to keep calm because uh, we, we need to have tests in order to gain strength in order to pro progress without uh, tests, without problems or difficulties, how can we learn to be strong? So really when people say bad things at you, just realize it's only vibration of air and they are our teachers who are trying to help us so that we can be, become strong. Um, and remain calm at the same time. I know you went through some wonderful transformations of the heart, getting to know Sai Baba. Before we get to those transformations, you also went through a behavior and scholastic transformation as a young boy when you left France and England and went back to Thailand. Everything about you changed, if I remember your story. Actually, I changed when I was 15 years old um, that's my main transformation, the biggest transformation that took place in my life. 
and at that time I did not know Swami. Um, so I was actually in a public school in England. Uh, it's a boarding school, okay, and uh, that's where the main transformation took place. But it was really very miraculous, uh, and I feel that it was Swami anyway, because Swami has uh, appeared to me. Uh, I, I didn't know it when I was born, when I was very, very young. He saved me in the uh, Second World War when our house was being bombed. So really, Swami has always been uh, looking after us, taking care of us, um, probably for centuries. <laughs> how, do you, how do you know he saved you during the Second World War? Well, my mother related the story because I was only just a baby. I was just born. I was born in 1940, which was right at the beginning of the war in Thailand. and. Um, at that time, we lived in an army barrack because my grandfather was a major in the um, Thai army. So we had a, a house inside the barrack. So when the, the Japanese came to occupy our country, they started to bomb, bomb us for a little while. Uh, then when they occupied our country, the Allies came and started bombing. Uh, the Japanese. The, the Japanese, and also they bombed us. Um, so at that time, <clears throat> my mother related this story that the, a young man came to our house and he offered a little packet and he told my mother, spread this over the roof and you will be safe. Okay. My mother opened the package and she described to me as fine sand. Okay. So um, my mother did what uh, she was told by that young man, spread this all over the roof. Then our house was the only house left standing at the end of the war. Amazing. So I was saved by that young man. Now how do I know this was Swami? Well, this happened much later. Uh, when I was invited to go and speak at the summer camp in Brindavan uh, in Whitefield. So I went there and I spoke. I had one and a half hour, to, one and a quarter hour to speak. And Swami was there. He was uh, there listening to the whole thing. So I thought this was a good opportunity because I always suspected that it may have been Swami coming to help me. So I told the story in front of Swami and when I said, my mother said it was fine sand, Swami turned around to all the professors who were sitting around him. He said, I didn't give his mother fine sand, I gave Viputi. <laughs> <laughs> and this was back in the early 40s? This was in the early 40s, yes. And I'm not aware of too many stories where Baba's miraculous accounts were known outside of India that early in his evolution. No, he did appear uh, during the war, saving many people in various places. In London, for example, he was known to have appeared and saved people. Yes, so it's not just, um, it's not unique. Well, you might say that was your first major transformation. He enabled you to survive the war. Well, yes, survival. <laughs> But uh, I was not transformed yet, okay, because so I knew nothing about uh, At the Swami. age of 15, when, <clears throat> as you describe it, the most significant transformation of your life, you hinted at it being connected to Baba. Can you tell us, can you lead us through that transformation when you were a student in England at the boarding house, the boarding school? Well, um, I was, it was uh, during the middle of the night, uh, I was sleeping in the dormitory. And in that same room, there were other 50 other boys sleeping side.